A very warm welcome to this presentation. I'm Dr. Schoffers. So I will spend some time to discuss uh, selected topics in Chapter 13. Um, you have already uh, received instruction in Part 1 with Mrs. Hansen. Um, and those videos are posted for your review. And we're going to um, dive into Section 7, 8, 10, 11, and 12. This section here is omitted, which is an anti-selective epoxidation. All right, first things first, uh, let me ask you, did you read the textbook for this chapter? Did you write notes for this chapter? I'm bringing this up because this is really vital. If you're coming to this video as a shortcut, thinking you don't need to read the text, you might actually be wasting your time. Um, it's often um, uh, discussed that students who have not read the textbook before coming to lectures, whether they are um, in person or um, asynchronous online or synchronous online, um, that they will really understand far less information and might actually end up confusing the students, further setting them back in their studies. So please make sure you have your notes, uh, have, have read the textbook and have taken your notes. Uh, please remember, if your pencil is not moving when you are reading or listening to or looking at video presentations, you are not learning. That is a very active part, a very vital part for success in org organic chemistry. All right, let's move on. Um, so please realize that even though many of um, the presentations are put, um, provided by the publisher, a lot of effort goes into modifying them, either rearranging the slides uh, for space so I can annotate, um, summarizing using different language that will help facilitate understanding the abstract concepts, uh, sometimes adding material. Uh, to the slide decks, so um, you will have access to regular slide decks, but also um, please make sure um, uh, that to realize that uh, the material in the videos uh, is somewhat different. Okay, but many of the um, graphics, uh, phrases, subjects, they are of course all in the textbook. That's why reading first is so vital. Okay, um, so first of all, nomenclature of epoxides. Um, we basically um, have epoxides as a very um, relevant intermediate. Um, this three-membered ring with an oxygen in there is also known as an oxyrane. And uh, so technically they are ethers because it's an ROR. Uh, we can also find this in a four-membered system, five-membered system, and six-membered system. And we will actually discuss some important uh, derivatives, especially later on this semester, when we are discussing carbohydrate chemistry. Okay, So oxyranes are also known as epoxides. How do we assign names? Well, we see, we see that this three-membered ring here can have up to four different substituents, okay? Uh, ideally, or the simplest uh, congener is ethylene oxide. Uh, we're actually using ethylene and then adding an oxide. So we make these actually via oxidation. I'm putting a square bracket around oxygen, meaning that they're oxidative methods. So this is ethylene, CH2, CH2. So that's the simplest one, but we can have one or two or three or four substituents on those. So we talk about substituted oxyranes. And here are a couple of examples. Um, we can, even though they're less stable and therefore more reactive, thus very important intermediates for functionization of organic molecules, we do find them in nature. And so here's dyspalure, which is a sex pheromone for the female gypsy moth. And then also here uh, for the American cockroach, you see these two epoxide structures. On the next slide, um, so here I'm outlining uh, the two methods. You may pause the video. An advantage of having these on-demand videos is that you can actually call them up uh, with more flexibility and you can pause the video, uh, read through the slide first, uh, look up some information, uh, jot down notes so you can take your time. I'll be going through this a little bit faster because you can pause at any time. So we have actually two methods. Method one, auction is treated as a side group. Uh, in this case, it's between two and three. So that's where we're placing the epoxy functionality. We also want to find the longest parent chain. So with the lowest number of for the first substituents. So we start with one here. So this is a pentane derivative, which you see here. So we have five carbons, and then we have one, two, 
three substituents. There are two ethyl groups here and a methyl group here. So you can deduce this. Another way for this for naming uh, epoxides is actually uh, we utilizing the oxirane itself now as the parent and view the substituents. So again, four. So here we have two methyls and two ethyl groups uh, are then defined. So we call it the parent is an oxirane and we indicate the substituents. Okay. Uh, on the next slide, um, here is the important information for preparation of epoxides. So what is shown here is basically an alkene. And so if we have cyclohexene here, um, we actually often refer to this as a cyclohexene oxide. So it's the ene, and here we have actually oxidative conditions. You see this in the, riches, in the richness of uh, oxygen. All of these oxidizers have this common formula. So it's R, C, O, and this is not a typo, 3, H. There's an extra oxygen in here that is being overall transferred to this. Don't worry too much about the mechanism. Worry more about um, or recall what the conditions are and what the overall conversion is. Please note that this has to be cis. We cannot have a transjuncture in a small three-membered ring. So there are two very uh, common uh, oxidation uh, reagents. Here's MCPBA and here's peroxyacetic acid. So it's acetic acid with an extra oxygen in here. Next slide. Uh, here are a couple of examples and here now we're outlining the stereospecificity. So that means the stereochemistry uh, needs to be accounted for. So if I have a cis arrangement in the alkene, two R groups on the same side, they need to end up on the same side in the product structure. Please familiarize yourself also with the stereo depictions, and you may want to use models for clarification. Uh, alternatively, trans alkenes will lead to trans epoxides. On the next slide, um, we have uh, preparation of epoxides can also be accomplished by using um, a starting material you have seen before, a halohydrin. A halohydrin is this molecule here. What they have in common is they have on adjacent carbons a hydroxyl group and a bromine group. And you uh, learned in Orgo 1 that we can use cyclohexene and we can treat a cyclohexene with Br2. This would typically give you a trans dibromide, but when we have water in the mix, that's when we get uh, the halohydrin because the first bromonium ion is being opened up by water uh, from the opposite side, and this is trans, and you would get both plus and minus. But since uh, there is symmetry in the final product here, that doesn't really matter uh, for the overall conversion. What's happening here? Well, we deprotonate the hydrogen. You may want to pause and jot this out with good, good curved arrows. So remember, this is a base, OH minus. It's going to plug off this acidic proton, then the, ins the ensuing alkoxide will attack from the opposite side and displace uh, the bromine via an SN2 mechanism. So here we see it in more detail. Here is the base. So that's what's in your NaOH. You should know that very well now. That is Na plus and OH minus. We draw the curved arrow in the correct direction from the O to the hydrogen, we form the alkoxide. Now we have a trans attack. We have a side view for chair conformation, and here's the epoxide. You may want to use models because this will become very important later on in the semester as we're going through uh, carbohydrate chemistry, among others. All right, so, um, so we can use either route, uh, either MCPBA or another peroxy acid or the halohydrin formation. And here the skill builder, um, uh, sections are very, very helpful. Uh, remember that we need to practice a lot to do well in organic chemistry. Uh, so here is 13.9. I just put in the slide. Uh, basically, we see here the same conditions, but note that we can, instead of having a racemic mixture, we can bias this by using a special catalyst. However, this section here is omitted. This is still a reminder that you will get a racemic mixture. I will see you in the next video.